new season of uh, the, the the Objective Cologne podcast, uh, where I'm gonna interview a few uh, speakers, and the first one um, is gonna be Philip um, Casgrain, who's gonna be uh, speaking with me uh, all the way from Canada. Hello. Hi. Hi. So first of all, can you tell me uh, where you are ex exactly? I'm currently in Ottawa, Canada. I, I live across the river in Gatineau, Quebec, so I'm I'm crossing the border every every day yeah. to come to work. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the company I work for is called the Lightspeed POS, uh, and that means Lightspeed Point of Sales. And what it what it does is um, uh, create point of sale software for uh, Mac, but that's based on Mac and iPad and um, iPhone as well and iPods. And we do sell into uh, all the sorts of retail shops, small small shops, big shops, uh, restaurants as well. We have a new office in Ghent, Belgium, so yeah. on the other side of the pond. And uh, that's where Lightspeed Restaurant is based. So if you're starting a restaurant business or know somebody who starts a restaurant business, take a look at Lightspeed Restaurant. Cool. Uh, yeah, Belgium for the win. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so let's stop talking about Belgium and, and, and speak a, a little bit about, uh, about yourself. Uh, I, I introduce you, uh, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, um, what you've done in the past. So for about eight years, I worked on Corel Painter, which is a software designed to paint with a natural media on a computer screen. Think of Photoshop, but for artists and for the blank page. Uh, that was a lot of fun. It taught me a lot about image editing and all the software that goes on with this. So after that, I started working at a company called Trans Gaming. And what they did is, uh, or they still do, is port Windows games to Mac and Linux. So I learned a lot about, a lot about Linux and I learned a lot about operating systems. And some of the games I worked on, uh, Dragon Age for Mac, Dragon Age 2, FIFA 2012, The Sims... Um, EVE Online, if you're familiar with these games as well, they're all uh, games that run on Windows, but also run on the Mac thanks, thanks to the CIDR technology, which is a port of the Wine technology, but for Mac, with uh, an optimization on graphics. So that was, that was very, very interesting. And after about three years, I found myself um, in a lull, and I started working here at Lightspeed Retail, working on uh, point-of-sale software for, uh, for Mac. And the really cool thing is um, at Lightspeed, I work in Cocoa all the time. That's really why I, I switch because <laughs> working, yeah. working on, on, on wine and cider is, is very fun in an operating system type of way, but you're working at a very low level okay. um, in C and, uh, and assembly. And uh, I kind of like to work in Cocoa a lot. And uh, now I work in Cocoa as my day job. So, you know, two thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to put two thumbs up for my company as well, Seven Principles, because one of the reasons why it's going to be very, very hard to make me move out of this company is that we work with um, a lot of time the latest stuff. And like since August, we work with Swift. Um, so nice. if you're going to offer me a job where I have to write Objective-C, I might be a little bit sad. Uh, oh well, it's not that bad. It's but, not yeah. that bad, I know. But when you've been working, and I know, I mean, I, I'm not. Don't get don't don't get me started on Swift because we all love the source kit, uh, whatever bug that crashes on us all day long. But yes. uh, it's it's pretty cool to be working with uh, managers who, who actually allows us to do um, this kind of stuff, but also the conference. And now actually we started a podcast, which we, which we record uh, from 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 work. Anyway, it makes Very me. Nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool actually. So it makes me think um, about you. You spoke a little bit uh, a lot of about games. It's very interesting because you're probably gonna have a lot of to discuss with uh, Max uh, from uh, Max Chris from Boeing's because this guy is doing for one thing he's doing video with uh, is working on Boeing's TV, uh, doing mm -hmm. a lot of video and and so speaking about nerdy stuff and not necessarily Coco. Um, he knows a lot of, of stuff. Uh, and, Low level uh, image processing. Yeah. Yes, those stuff are all like a lot that. of fun. Yeah, and uh, he also um, um, does a lot of, of stuff like OpenGL and things like that. So um, it's uh, pretty interesting. At Transgaming, there were two teams uh, for development. There was the graphics team, which did uh, OpenGL, sorry, uh, DirectX to OpenGL. So the 3D API from Windows to OpenGL. So that yeah. was. Uh, that was really our strength at Transgaming was uh, to translate these uh, at runtime and in real time and really, really fast and being able to do it uh, without losing too many frames per second. Okay. Uh, so there was a graphics team and I was at a core team, which is everything else. <laughs> so, you know, m memory, networking, uh, file system, mm -hmm. input, uh, device management, all of this was on the core team and we I didn't touch a whole lot of graphics, but I, 
I so desperately wanted to learn OpenGL, but meh, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it is anyways, but it um, uh, makes me think a little bit about some people at Apple that are moving from uh, like uh, CoreOS to then UIKit and then other stuff like that. Um, yes. Um, it's, 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 it's very interesting and, uh, and, and, and certainly you learn a lot of stuff when you work with the very low-level stuff, but uh, I can imagine that after a while you just want to do the, the, the more, I would say, normal stuff regular stuff like uh, yes. modern stuff uh with coco anyway that 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 opens up a lot of talks with ranch as well with uh jonathan well love ranch who's going to be at the conference as well uh speaking about uh old school stuff um this guy has been around for a while um let's um let's move a little bit to your talk uh you offered me to give different talks like three or four and i i didn't really know which one to to to, to pick uh, last year, so, we... so you picked the one that I actually have to work at. <laughs> See, I knew that. Um, um, yes, exactly. I, I... And I have to work for my talk, which is good, which is how it should be. You don't want to give the same talk all the time. Yeah. But um, basically, yes, I, there, there's technical talks, but I feel like technical talks you can, you can get easily. It's easier to get technical content from even WWDC videos or something like that. What, what you want is you want to have... Um, an experience you won't get anywhere else. And where I coming, I'm, I come from with, from this is, um, is I'm personally very, very tired of people cheapening their apps by, at, by selling them at you know ninety nine cents or a dollar ninety nine. And when you tell people how much is your app, uh, and they all expect it to be ninety nine cents, and I think it's a it's a race to the bottom. And we see it in hardware. For example, when people start selling phones cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Um, the quality drops and the profits drop with them. So um, you can't build a sustainable business by going to the race to the bottom. So what I do, um, and my, the, my main, there should be two prices for apps. The first price should be free. There's a bunch of apps that are free. I mean, you're not going to pay for the Facebook app or Twitter or these things. The, the apps that are backed by big companies, uh, even Lightspeed, we make apps. Uh, for that talk to our web service so we monetize some some of the way make the app is not the way we don't make people pay for the app because um, they wouldn't be able to afford it it's really the service that you pay for um, and um, the other price should be reasonable and reasonable is something that uh, people that are in the software development business uh, will all have a different saying of what is reasonable. It depends on where you live. It depends on what demands that there are on your life. Like, do you have family? Do you have to feed people? Do you, are you responsible? Do you have a house in uh, you know, San Francisco? Do you, or, or do you live out in the middle of nowhere where the taxes are low or there's, there, there's, no, there's almost no cost and biggest cost is your internet? Maybe you live on a boat and you almost have no expenses except for uh, getting some, uh, some high-speed internet from time to time. It all varies, but it should be a reasonable price. You should be able to charge a price that people will look at and say, "Hey, this is the this is a reasonable price for software." Yes, I can pay twenty bucks, thirty bucks. Look at the Omni Group; they sell their pro apps for you know thirty, forty, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars even for some of the apps. And yes, some of these are Mac apps, but they also do that for iOS apps. So there is a market for apps that are built with quality or that are built to fill a special, a special purpose that uh, people will pay for. So mm -hmm. one part of it is price your apps according to what uh, you feel is reasonable for people to pay. The other part of it is you want to uh, have an app that's sustainable, right? So if, you, if your app is free or it's 99 cents and you don't sell enough copies, well, what's going to happen? It's just going to it's just going to go away. And if it's something that's important to you, maybe it deserves to go away, but if it's something that's important to you, it, you should try to be able to build a business. And you can have more than one app. But I also want to raise the, the consciousness in the public that says, people say, well, how much do you sell your app for? I sell my app for $12. $12? You know, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm expecting it to be $0.99. Cents. No, it's not. I, then the more people sell prices, apps at reasonable prices, the easier it's going to be to sell to the rest of the public. Mm -hmm. It's not like the public doesn't have any money. They already paid $600, $700, $800 dollars for their phone. They pay $50, $60, $70 dollars a month for their phone. Uh, they pay a lot of money for even their cup of coffee that they're drinking while they're telling you this. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't they pay for something that you've built? They, we need to work against this. And I think it's, it's a service to all developers when you raise the price of your app. And of course, that might mean somebody is going to come and undercut you. That's a risk. 
Yeah. But uh, if you're if you're first and you do a good job, or second and you do a good job, you stand a good chance. Yeah, my my good friends Ken and Glenn Espeslag from Ecam, uh, Ken actually used to tell me uh, you shouldn't sell a piece of software for less than a cup of coffee. Um, and um, I think it's 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 quite true actually. Although I have to, uh, when I think about it, the race to the bottom actually really started with with iOS and with the iPhone. Yes, yes. Um, so and now it's, it's trickling into the Mac as well with the Mac yeah. App Store. Yeah. But right? if you look at so that- companies like Panic, for example, they proved uh, 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 a few weeks ago that they were actually making more money uh, out of the Mac uh, yeah. uh, than iOS. Um, yeah. Which is interesting. So, um, um, oh, I, I remember what it, the other one that I was looking for is, uh, depending on your app, there might there might be a market for your app of people that already have money. I make an app that converts train t- train tickets into passbook for uh, our lo- our uh, com- our train company in Canada called Via Rail. That for some reason they don't send you a passbook pass. My app does it. It does this one thing. Yeah. It costs twelve dollars. People are going to go, what? I don't need this. Then I don't need you as a customer, right? Yeah. And these people are already paying $100, $150, $200 for their train tickets. What's $10 or $12 when you're traveling frequently if it saves you from always digging into your email to find a little QR code and stuff? So that's, uh, that's what it does, and it's, it's selling pretty well. I admit it's a niche, and I also admit that somebody could come in and eat my lunch. But right now, it yeah. makes sense for me to have the price as high as I think it should be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, have you ever been to Germany? Or? I have been to Germany, and I thought that every town was called Ostgang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. then I found a McDonald's where people spoke English because I didn't speak a word of German. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a very funny uh, talk uh, at uh, a conference I was in Paris uh, from um, um, Daniel uh, from uh, from Coco Conf. Um, yes, I forgot. Daniel Steinberg. Exactly, yes. Daniel Steinberg, um, and he, he speaks in his talk about the the ugly American, and it's a very interesting. Uh, uh, he's he's paraphrasing uh, a book and uh, speaking about the American, which is visiting Paris, and the first thing they do is go to Starbucks. And the second thing they do is go to McDonald's. And when they come back home, everybody asks them, so how was the food uh, um, in, in France? Uh, about the same. <laughs> <laughs> but of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least have a quickie burger when you're going to France. Yeah, 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 exactly. But yeah, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have quick in, uh, in Germany. So yeah. you have to stick with other stuff. Anyways, uh, speaking about that, the, uh, I, m- I might remember remind everybody that the the one of the good thing of Objective Cologne is the full uh, uh, the flat rate on food and on uh, and on drink. So which is I think uh, the way uh, it 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 should always be. Uh, and also especially the the dinner, the conference dinner, it's also full on on beer and wine, which always surprises my catering, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because the ability of developers to drink beers is actually uh, always surprising to them. <laughs> um, but uh, that's what we call a flat price. So uh, <laughs> yes. So, so um, it is also Germany. So beer and Germany, I think, go well together. I was listening to your French uh, podcast like uh, yes. like three hours ago, and at the end, your uh, uh, colleague, uh, the other Philip, said the last time he was in Germany, he doesn't even actually remember <laughs> because of the good <laughs> beer. <laughs> it was probably in October too. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, it was uh, fun to chat with you, uh, and um, I I can't wait to have you here uh, in Germany late June. Uh, 20, I look forward 20, to it very 25th. much. Uh, and it's also for me very interesting because uh, it's also inviting yet another conference organizer, just like I had Scotty last year. So it's it's becoming some kind of a tradition that I uh, that I'm going to try to invite every year uh, as a speaker, somebody who organizes a conference. Um, I for for people who don't know, I organize a conference called NS North, yeah. which is it's yeah. in its third year this year. Uh, it's happening uh, April tenth to the twelfth uh, here in Montebello, Quebec, so about an hour's drive from here. Uh, and I also gave a talk at AltConf last year uh, during the WWDC that about building communities. Okay. So if you want to build um, uh, drawing on my experience as a Cocoa Heads organizer and also a conference organizer, how to how to work to create your own little community because it's really nice when you can go to some place where somebody like you has created a conference and, and you bring a community together. That's awesome. But yeah. what if you could do it in your own hometown? 
in your own area and do how would you start with this that's kind of where where was going for with this and mm -hmm. and it's been very well received so um i i look forward to to going to uh, cologne and actually meeting a whole lot of new people uh yeah. it's uh it's it's going to be hopefully there's going to be a lot of uh, cross pollination across the pond and i yeah. really look forward to that i mean uh scotty did a talk about community last year at at um at, uh, at objective cologne and uh, this is what it's all about this is the reason why we build conferences it's uh yeah. not because we want to become a millionaire that doesn't actually really work uh, uh it's because we just want to bring people together and it's a, it's a lot of fun to organize uh yes um so i hope uh, it's uh, going to keep we're going to keep on doing those those stuff in parallel to our work as a as a developer because uh and it's also i love conferences i try to only go to conferences that are organized by developers for developers um, I try to avoid the, the or by somebody being in the industry. Uh, I try to avoid the conference ran by conference companies. Um, there's there that aspect to it, but on the other hand, if you want to broaden your horizons a little bit, you need to uh, go to other kinds of conferences too. Maybe. Uh, maybe that would be the last interesting word. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, see you soon in Cologne. And uh, yeah, um, so. Uh, Thank you for being with us, uh, with me. and Thank you for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Bye. Au revoir.